Hello, in this video we'll talk about innate immune system and this is going to be an overview of the innate immune system. So innate immunity refers to the non-specific defense response of our immune system that is evoked just after a few seconds pathogen has invaded our body. So the components of the innate immune system involves effector molecules and cellular component. Inside the cellular components, there are many cell types such as macrophages, dendritic cells, neutrophil, NK cells, mast cells, eosinophils and many of them. And inside the effector molecule category, there are complement proteins and cytokine. If you wish to know that how these cellular components are evolved or how these cellular components are generated, so you can watch my video and the link is given in the i button. Let's talk about the functions of the innate immune system. So first of all, their job is to recognize pathogen. Secondly, they know how to engulf the pathogen and they would try at least to destroy the pathogen. Thirdly, they have to alarm other immune component cells such that they can also come and together can lead to a stronger immune response. Lastly, their job is to coordinate with the adaptive immune system and let the adaptive immune system know about the nature of the pathogen. So first job is to do recognition and recognition is done by specific receptors present on macrophages, dendritic cell or even B cells. So what aspects of the pathogen does these cell types determine? It turns out they determine something is known as PAM pathogen associated molecular pattern. In simple words, these are molecular signatures of the pathogen which, which is determined by the receptors present on the macrophages or dendritic cell. So let's talk about this thing in a bit more details. We are looking at a dendritic cell here which is displaying a pathogen derived antigen on its class 2 MHC molecule. Now before it can display the pathogen derived antigen, it has to understand at the first place that it's a pathogen. And that is done with the help of pattern recognition receptors. One of them is toll-like receptors. Toll-like receptors are generally known as path pattern, pattern recognition receptors. So they detect PAMPs or pathogen associated molecular patterns which could be bacterial, protein, DNA or even other kind of enzyme. So there are quite a lot of TLR present on the dendritic cell such as TLR1 and 2, which is responsible for detection of bacteria and parasites, TLR2 and 6, which is responsible for detection of gram-positive bacteria and fungi. So note this, that these TLRs can homodimerize and heterodimerize. In this case, both of these TLR are heterodimer. Now there are homodimer TLR, such as TLR5, which determines bacterial flagella, and also TLR4, which determines cell wall components of gram-negative bacteria such as lipopolysaccharide. There are many toll-like receptors which are also present in endosomes such as TLR4, TLR9, TLR7 and TLR3 and many of these things are responsible for determining intracellular pathogens. So most of them determine viral RNA, viral DNA etc. So now we have an overview of what type of pattern recognition receptor is present on the dendritic cell surface. Now let's try to understand the process of detection. So the process of detection is basically an intricate signaling pathway where the pathogen derived molecular pattern is bound to the toll like receptor and after binding there are signaling pathways which are initiated. The first component of this signaling pathway is myeloid differentiation factor 88 which signals to the nucleus and leads to several gene activation. So let us look at this process in a bit more details. So first of all, after binding to PAMP, MyD88 is recruited. MyD88 activates several kinases such as ARAC and TRAF6. This further leads to activation of NF-kappa-beta, which is the key player in this signaling pathway. And NF-kappa-beta is a transcriptional activator, so it can migrate into the nucleus and leads to transcription of several genes. Out of many genes that is transcribed by NF-kappa-beta, the major ones are several cytokine genes such as IL-1, IL-6, 
TNF alpha, etc. But there are other TLR which are present in the endocytotic vesicles. These TLR signals via a different signaling pathway, which involves interferon response factor IRF7 or 3. And this is also a transcriptional activator which can activate different set of genes and thereby mediate the response. So depending upon the pathogen, the TLR signaling would be also different and it would lead to different kind of cytokine production, either cytokine production or interferon production. So let's try to understand other type of pattern recognition receptors that are present on the surface of dendritic cell or these kind of innate immune cells. These pattern recognition receptors are C-type lectin receptor or CLRs. These CLRs signal with the help of CARD9, which is a caspase recruitment domain 9 and ultimately it leads to activation of NF-kappa-beta and then NF-kappa-beta leads to genetic changes. There are other kind of like pattern recognition receptors such as RLR which is known as rig i like receptor. This RLR, their ligand is generally different kind of viral or bacterial RNA. They determine the RNA and ultimately through a intricate signaling pathway leads to activation of IRF7 or 3 which can lead to specific set of gene expression. Other than this, there is NLR or nod like receptor. Nod like receptor works via several separate pathway and it activates AP1 family of transcription factors which can give rise to a separate set of gene expression. So the common theme between all of these kind of pattern recognition receptor is they are dedicated to recognize a class of pathogen derived molecular pattern and they respond via different set of gene expression. So all the cases they would have a different type of response. Now let's talk about the CLR in a bit more details. So CLRs are super important in terms of determining fungal pathogens. So when there is a fungal infection, CLR activates specific genes which creates inflammation. But all of these CLRs are not involved in inflammatory response. So this is not a generalization because many CLRs such as Dectin are important for production of interleukin 1, 6, interleukin 12, etc. But another CLR which is known as DC sign leads to suppression of these genes of these pro-inflammatory genes. So they can work by activation of inflammatory cytokines also they can work by inhibiting these inflammatory cytokine genes. Now the biggest problem with innate immune system is they have limited specificity. For example this TLR4 molecule would be determining lipopolysaccharides but it cannot tell us that this lipopolysaccharide is coming from which strain of bacteria. So that is why they have limited specificity. So they can tell that it is coming from a bacteria but between different strains of bacteria it cannot discriminate. And that is why we need a more specific immune system which is done by our adaptive immune system. So if you want to learn more about adaptive immune system you can click on the link which you would find in the i button. So let's talk about the recognition part. So first of all, there would be recognition of these pathogen associated molecular patterns and then it would be coordinated with the adaptive immune system components. Now this adaptive immune system component would eventually mount a specific immune response. So here is a dendritic cell which is recognizing some bacteria as a pathogen. Then they would first engulf this pathogen and after engulfing pathogen, with the help of lysosome, these pathogens would be degraded and their components would be displayed on the class 2 MHC molecules because dendritic cells are classical antigen presenter cells. Now these dendritic cells have to coordinate with the adaptive immune system and that's why it would migrate all the way long to lymph node. And inside the lymph node, there are specific regions for T cells and B cells. So in the paracortex area, this particular uh, dendritic cell would activate T cells. T cells would eventually activate B cells which can further be generate plasma cells and ultimately these B cells can also proliferate a lot and give rise to long-lived plasma cells. So all this coordination between innate and adaptive immune system is only possible via dendritic cell. Other component of the innate immune system is the complement pathway. 
Now, complement proteins can coat the bacteria and make it less harmful or make it less active. So, this is called opsonization. These bacteria are now opsonized and these opsonized bacteria can ultimately be destroyed with the help of complement pathway. So, first of all, there is antibody mediated complement fixation which lead to recruitment of several component proteins and there is a pore formation in the membrane which is known as membrane attack complex. So, the membrane attack complex leads to fluid leakage which eventually leads to bursting of this pathogen and thereby the pathogen is destroyed. So, this is one way by which innate immune system can destroy the pathogen. But point to be noted that this complement fixation pathway is not specific. It can be same irrespective of any kind of bacterial strain. Now, another important function of innate immune system is to alarm other components of the immunity. For example, in this case, the dendritic cell and the macrophage has recognized some pathogens and now they want to send the alarm signal and they are calling for backup. So, this signal is received by the cells which are circulating in the bloodstream such as this neutrophil. This neutrophil would sense this signal and then change its cytoskeletal rearrangement to move out of this blood vesicle and come into the tissue space. And there are other chemokine mediated factors which allow this neutrophil to find their way towards the infection site and thereby neutrophil can join these macrophages and dendritic cell to fight pathogen further. So, this is how they are calling for backup. After that, there is another component which is a cold blood killer and the lethal weapon of the immune system which is known as NK cell or natural killer cell. Natural killer cells are born to kill. There are many important features of natural killer cell. If you want a detailed video on that, you can click on the link. Natural killer cell have set of activatory and inhibitory receptor. They are highly loaded with phagocytotic granules which are loaded with enzymes that can degrade pathogens or other cell types. They have a signature NK1.1 surface receptor. They also have FC receptor and fast ligand. Now, whenever there is a class 1 MHC derived peptide, NK cell would not engage, right? So, NK cell's inherent tendency is to kill the pathogen. But when there is an inhibitory signal which is provided by these class 1 MHC and inhibitory receptor interaction, the NK cell would disengage. But when class 1 MHC mediated peptides are not displayed, NK cells are super angry and now they would engage and thereby killing the pathogen along with the cell type. So, NK cells would destroy the whole cell and all the pathogens which are intracellular to this cell would be destroyed. And that is how NK cell kills pathogen and it is also non-specific but very effective component and they have very high killing potential. So, in this video we learned about how innate immune system components recognize pathogen, how they can engulf and destroy these pathogens. Thirdly, we learned how they can send alarm signals such that other immune components can be recruited into the site of infection. And lastly, we looked at how they can interact with the adaptive immune system components such that they can coordinate a specific and a stronger immune response. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. You can also support me by paying me in Patreon and my courses are present in Unacademy so you can always join Unacademy and using my code AP10 you can get a 10% discount. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening.